Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Custom Lobby. I'm your host, JT, and with me is my good friend, Justin. Justin, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. You know, uh, I know the audience can't hear this right now, but this is like our third take. So, you know, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be awesome. It's a little hot. California's hot. <laughs> no, it is, man. And um, yeah, so like Justin said, this is our first um, ever episode and, and podcast for me personally. Um, but we decided to come together and, and um, try to tackle this new venture um, because we're both really passionate about video games. I've known Justin for over 10 years, um, I think since middle school, but we really got to know each other well in high school and college. And we talk about video games a lot, so we thought it'd be really fun to just record our thoughts and um, share it with people because I think it's going to be really informative and entertaining. But Justin, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, dude, um, I'm really excited to be here. It's been a long time coming. Like we we always talked about, like man, I want to I want to do a podcast. I want to do a podcast. JT's like, well, let's just do it. Dang it. And yes, so we're yes. like, let's pop in. But uh, yeah, some of the things that I enjoy, dude, are gaming. Obviously, one of my favorite genres, RPGs. I like shooters. You know, I'm excited to be talking about X Defiant today. I'm sure you can see the gameplay playing on screen right now. But um, something outside of gaming that I like is writing. I like world building. I'm an avid D and D player. Stuff like that. A little bit about me. Cool. Very cool. Yeah. And as and for those of you that don't know me or are new to my channel, um, I'm a big, big first person shooter guy. I've started playing games at the age of four. Um, Xbox was my first console. Um, I, Halo was the very first game I played. So I have a huge, huge um, affinity for it. Um, even though Halo's kind of on on a downward trend right now, um, I'll Gigi. always come back and check it out. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's pretty bad. But um, one thing to know about me is that I play all types of games, um, except for maybe sports games. That's probably my least knowledgeable genre. And one thing outside of games that I really love is um, I'm a big movie buff. So all things movies, um, it, you know, I'm down to talk about it. And um, hopefully maybe that's something we could talk about in the future. Um, but X Defiant, yes, X Defiant, that's the game we have on in the background. I am a big fan of X Defiant. We both are. We played a good amount um, since the launch of the game. And um, when the when the game first came out, okay, so there's so many live service games out there, Justin. Um, so many issues plague live service games. But when all is said and done, I think X Defiant had one of the better um, games barring some issues uh the first one being server issues um i'm a big overwatch guy as well so overwatch to compare it to overwatch overwatch was down for like a couple months um but or not a couple months sorry a couple it was a it was down for a couple days like you wouldn't be able to log into the game people weren't getting their gear but x defiance started off a couple hours you weren't able to play but you know Within the same day, people were starting to get into the game. Um, did you experience any any problems like that regarding servers the the first day it came out? First of all, Overwatch fans, <laughs> I'm just kidding, but you know, like, <laughs> yeah. it's kind of deserved when you're an Overwatch fan. You know, like you got <laughs> shafted by Blizzard, bro. But anyway, not okay. So I will say, like for me personally, um, I was able to get in the game day one much better than hell divers by the way which if we were all yes. there for the launch of hell divers yeah. like it was it took days for you to even get into yeah to servers and uh my experience in hell divers wasn't that bad just like it was with x defiant but that might just come with the territory you know pc gamers were a big part of the market i should have mentioned that when i introduced myself i am a pc gamer exclusively for the most part and so for us it's uh i mean launch issues are definitely a thing but we don't feel them as much as like the big console markets you know the more casual gaming consumer base um no but like netcode definitely was a huge huge issue and that definitely has to do with servers so like once we got into the game uh, i could definitely feel like uh you know some sometimes i'd be dying around corners sometimes i'd be killing people around corners uh sometimes it felt like bullets weren't registering damage just wasn't being dished out you know i'm holding that left click and nobody's falling and it, it sometimes gets really frustrating especially when like Things like sniper rifles were, were as egregious as they were. It was like, man, I really yeah. should not have died there. And then the spam jumping, all that stuff. Like there were there were things that were related to netcode that like made other issues much worse. So uh, I know things have slightly improved. A lot of the netcode was actually based on uh, a lot of the netcode issues were based on like some character abilities that were apparently like 
overloading the server. We have an article to talk about that. We'll talk about that later. But that's just like a, yeah. a little teaser of what we're going to get into. Uh, how about you? Like, being in the console space, was it hard for you guys to get in on day one? I, I actually don't think I played on day one. I might have played on day two, day three. Yeah, no, um, it was uh, it was pretty well. Like I said, it took a, it took a couple of hours, um, a lot of the afternoon. But, yeah, I was able to log in the day of, and, um, you know, I had a pretty good time. The netcode issues were really apparent. Um, but even if you take, I guess, the netcode problems aside, the weapon imbalance was a huge complaint, I think, within the community. Snipers were one-shotting people. Um, they weren't flinching when they were getting attacked. So they were basically able to just free roam or you know they were able to 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 take over the lobbies i i think and then you know um you know there were some class class issues as well um but but overall it was it was a pretty enjoyable um experience um but um yeah pre-season man it lasted for for uh quite a while um did you what are your thoughts on um the length of the preseason and what we've gotten so far. Well, first of all, I'd like to transition us to the article on netcode. Um, oh, perfect. Yeah. So, uh, Polygon actually had a little bit to say about the the netcode stuff and some of the the classic launch day troubles that you know a lot of free to play games face, and not even just free to play games, but uh, games as a service. Most games as services are, are free to play games. Not always true, but yeah. yeah so. Uh, going into balance transitioning over to balance uh you know i know something that you talked about while we were playing the game is uh you were like i don't think the cleaners are, are that good you know what i mean i remember saying <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. the cleaners are are phenomenal i think the drone definitely uh is one of the abilities we could talk about that is is pretty weak you know what, what's interesting about the characters and um like the abilities is they're kind of you know if, if nobody's really played the game they're here for the first time in x defiant you have different factions they all have uh set abilities each faction has two abilities you can choose from and so the cleaners had this drone that could like fly and explode it was basically like an extra grenade but like if it only flew in a straight line and it would explode after reaching a certain distance the other ability they had though was a molotov that they would throw at their feet and it was basically like a like a martyrdom but it doesn't kill the person dropping it on the ground so one really powerful combo, which I still enjoy playing, is like the double barrel shotgun with the the Molotov combo. You just run up on people and smack it down on the ground. It's uh, it was pretty OP, but I, I know they patched it, uh, so it's yeah. not as egregious as it was. It's stuff like that that's like need gets ironed out generally when a game gets launched. Sniper rifles. I know there was a big like uh, headbutting of the two factions. You know, pro sniper rifle and anti sniper rifle. Uh, there were some changes made there specifically to like uh flinching i actually have uh yeah. the patch notes right here for year one season 0 0.3 uh some of the weapon changes that they made revamping how snipers flinch when they're tagged by enemy fire that was a huge thing i remember even sniping myself and being shot at and realizing like why am i not why is my screen not bouncing like it should be like <laughs> snipers are, were definitely unbalanced on launch and anybody who thinks otherwise like you're capping bro you're yeah, they're, bl they're blinded. <laughs> they're blinded by their, you know, their enjoyment of sniping. And another thing they balanced, I think, was like you said earlier, was the um, the slide jumping. So now after you slide jump, I think four or five times, your we your weapon will start to sway. Not but slide jumping. Uh, jump uh, like bunny hopping. Bunny hopping. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Bunny hopping. Yes. Some people say that that's not enough of a change because people will get the kills within four, so they might need to like balance that a little bit more but of course that'll come in time i think right you know but... i think it's actually okay to keep stuff like that uh to a minimum because like four may seem egregious like it may suck in a 1v1 but at least we're not at the, the point where like somebody can just like bounce 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 and eliminate an entire team you know it's like if you're gonna exactly. do the bounce strat if you encounter more than one opponent you're probably gonna go down you'll just it'll just be a trade which is like you have that trade-off. You might win your 1v1, but you might not win the 1v2 anymore like you used to. Exactly. Um, so. And then if you got rid of it completely, too, that just takes away from, you know, the game's identity and it being fun. You know what I mean? Like, people take away some stuff for fun and then, you know... Yeah, the more casual experience. And, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
but uh yeah no i mean the so far the balances have been pretty good and also for the record i actually didn't mind the um the the uh the division class the cleaners too much i just thought they were middle of the road for clarification purposes uh i think the worst one i think by far is the is the watchdogs one but i think we both agree on that one or do you think they're they're not the bottom of the barrel the watchdogs guys definitely are the bottom of the barrel but i will say i will definitely say like uh, them aside i don't think the cleaners belong where the you you put them on the tier list bro like i I honestly think (laughs) i honestly think bro libertad is weak and the only reason i say that is because not even because of their abilities but because this community for whatever reason hates being healed bro every time i throw yeah, down that yeah, little yeah, that little gas thing everyone's like oh i'm gonna die it's gonna choke me to death like no i'm trying to heal you bro get back in that little gas i need you i need you to not die okay you wouldn't be dying yeah. to these cleaners if you got healed and had full hp i'm just saying <laughs> you know maybe i like the Lib- libertad a lot more because i play a lot of those objective modes where it's like occupy or escort where you can throw the heals down in the objective and people will get healed like whether they want to or not if they're in the objective they'll get healed but if you're playing like tdm or something which is a mode they added during yes. the preseason by the way then it sucks and but you're getting also- in you're also getting yeah. into like escort modes he- being a healer is damn near impossible because the package is always moving so it like, is moving. Yeah. It's like it's one of those things. Like there are some classes that are good in yeah. every game mode, and Libertad is yeah. only good in some game so, modes. In some game modes, yeah. And I guess that is partly the point of the game. You know, it's to mix and match and to yeah. to do play styles. But so yeah, I mean, I could see your point. And also, the two abilities that the cleaners have are actually really good. So I, I they are I, offensive I, based I, abilities, and it fits their not only their aesthetic from the game that they come from, but yeah. also like. Um, like gameplay in X Defiant, it's definitely and yeah. it's it's sad also talking about the Watchdogs guys because I know that there's some absolute free to plays out there that probably don't even have them unlocked still. Like it's not even worth yeah. unlocking them, and it's unfortunate because I think they do have a place, especially like in uh, I know ranked mode isn't officially out, but like testing the waters with it, they are really good in that in them specifically in ranked because they counter the phantoms perfectly. But that's the only thing they're good for. And they have, like, the kind of the same problem as Libertad, only more egregious. Because, like, um, if they're not using Phantoms with shields, then it's pointless to even pick that yeah. class. Yeah. I will I will say, though, for the cleaners, their ultimate somewhat sucks. Like, it's pretty powerful. But, like, to get up close to somebody is a lot harder than, say, Echelon's ult. It also has Surprise. a long pullout time. That, too. Yeah. That, too. Like, I can run... And like get a bunch of kills with the echelons ult, but for the fire the, for the cleaners, yeah, it just seems a lot harder. See, and I think echelons are yeah. OP. I actually have a note here, like in our in our thing, talking about how <laughs> echelons yeah. are absolutely atrocious. Like they're so good. Like if you were to put everyone on um uh, like a tier list, echelon would be yeah. like S plus. Both of their abilities. One gives you wall hacks. Yeah. One makes you invisible. Yeah. And the invisibility is not that easy to spot for unless you like have a trained eye and know what you're looking for exactly so like, yeah they did they did they did balance the um the wall hacks i think but yeah it's still pretty powerful <laughs> yeah i was um, i'm looking here like under factions uh some fixes but then also it talks about like the libertad healing machine is one of the things that caused some netcode issues so hopefully the game's running better for everybody i haven't played it since that patch to be entirely honest with you but that's only because elden ring and other stuff has taken up my time but <laughs> yeah yeah we've we have been enjoying uh x defiant a lot we've been playing with a lot of friends and one of the points of conten- contention within with within the community um uh, is the skill-based matchmaking oh, everybody likes to talk- yeah everybody likes talking about <laughs> the skill-based matchmaking me and justin actually have some differing views on it but um yeah, so Justin, you want to explain a little bit of skill-based matchmaking to those who might not know, because there's some things that I surely don't... I don't know everything about skill-based matchmaking, so I'm not going to pretend like I don't. So if you if you want to take the floor. Yeah, so I am a... I mentioned earlier I liked playing shooters. Uh, I like playing RPGs. One of the things that I used to be really into was competitive shooters. Uh, I used to play a lot of Counter-Strike. I have over 1,500 hours just in that game alone. Um, hundreds of hours in Rainbow Six Siege. Uh... A, do- a few dozen hours in Valorant, not really my my forte, but still a competitive shooter. Um, so one thing that I think starting off, people have this misconception of what skill-based matchmaking truly is. Some systems are worse than others. Um, what X Defiant, I'm sorry, what uh, one common thing, 
compared to X Defiant gameplay wise is Call of Duty. I actually have um, an article pulled up here from IGN saying how Ubisoft is uh, ditching SBMM for their X Defiant game, whereas COD is is still kind of using it. The thing with COD is it uses like a KD system to match people with other similar KDs, so you could like tank your KD and then yeah. get matched with people who are worse at the game, and so like it, it's not a fun experience. That's an egregiously bad example of like a skill based yeah. matchmaking system. That is a, that is a bad system. There are other systems. Uh, it's it's hard to get into all of them right now, but if you guys have played League of Legends, you know what MMR is. That's based off wins losses. Anybody here who plays chess knows that we use the United States Chess Federation rating system, which is based off wins, losses, uh, how many moves it took you to win that game, how many, uh, the, the, it takes the elo of the other people into consideration. So like if you beat somebody who's like lower on the bracket from you, you earn less points towards your rating. There's so many ways to do it. CSGO now use, or sorry, I should say Counter-Strike too uses the Glico 2 system, which I'm not even going to get into, but it is a new system, a relatively new system that hasn't really been tried and tested yet, but it's not like skill-based matchmaking is stuck in this endless loop of, like, it's the same thing. Like, these companies are trying to, to innovate and make a system that is fair competitively and viably. Now, I know some people, like like you, for instance, would argue, like, it doesn't belong in a casual mode, yeah. which that's a whole different argument in and of yeah. itself and i know call of duty does include skill-based matchmaking in its casual modes and x defiant does not so if you want to talk about that uh feel free i have the argument. yeah Hold yeah on. yeah so so um yeah so no i that is you know very very good point to bring up about how league of legends is uh for example league of legends is um skill-based matchmaking is far different than call of duty and that actually makes a lot of sense because uh, my enjoyment of like say multiple matches in a row um it was a lot my experiences between matches were a lot different than say call of duty call of duty is probably the most egregious example and i think one of the big reasons why um people don't do not want skill-based matchmaking in x define is because they're worried that it's going to be exactly or very similar to call of duty which for me, I'm actually a big fan of it not having skill-based matchmaking. Um, to, to reference that IGN article that you brought up a little bit earlier, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, one of the you know, lead directors of the game, uh, Mark Rubin, was quoted saying that they believe that no skill-based ma matchmaking is paramount to fun and a varied game experience in the long term. Uh, quote, frankly, skill-based matchmaking means every casual game is repetitive, constantly repeating matches that are just as stressful and matched as ranked. We believe casual playlists should be fun and no skill-based matchmaking is the way to do that, end quote. Um, I think he's spot on on that. Um, I know people have had some bad experiences grouping up with friends, but even when you're losing... Us included, I'd, I'd like to mention. Different. <laughs> yes, whenever we... Yeah, whenever I play with Justin and a group of friends, um, sometimes we get our butts kicked. And, um, you know, sometimes it's a it's a terrible time. But then, you know, when it's really close, even if we lose, I still find a lot more enjoyment from that than, say, when I play Call of Duty. Because whenever I play Call of Duty, I'm either winning or I'm losing or I'm getting my butt kicked or I'm kicking someone's butt. Like, it's very – I don't know if artificial is the word, but it's very repetitive. And and and, and the X Defiant, it has skill-based matchmaking. It's just – in the competitive, uh, in, in, in ranked. We'll get into which, that, because uh, I don't even yeah. think that's the case. We'll get into that. That's yeah. something we're yeah. going to talk and, about. And also, yeah, that will change, hopefully, uh, with Season 1. But I think if you, if you, yeah, depending on which system they used, it could be good. But, but I mean, I'm... I'm I will say, dude, I still stuff. remember that night we played together with the boys, and it was, like, 11 freaking games, and we didn't get a single win, and you're telling me that, that like, no, nah, skill-based matchmaking, like, I, 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 I totally get, like, the casual mindset yeah. of, like, skill-based matchmaking yeah. shouldn't be involved yeah. in, like, a casual mode, but, like, dude, sometimes when I'm playing this game, especially, like, when I'm playing, uh, not even when I'm playing solo, because when I play solo, it feels like I'm... Like, the real issue here is, like, there's not enough team synergy. One thing about voice chat in this game, which is, like, a minor thing, I don't want to go super deep into it, is if people in your lobby are in a party, it mutes yeah. the audio for the other people in your lobby. So that yeah, they're that only talking sense. in their group, but, like, you can't communicate with the people that are also playing the game, which means they can't hear me, and I can't hear them. So yeah. unless they go into the game settings 
and then switch it to like open an open mic. I forget what the setting is exactly, but no, it's yeah. it's it's ridiculous. It's almost like it's not encouraging team play in a game that's like you have has abilities. Team it has yeah. team play. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, yeah. it's a little weird. Yeah. It's a little funky. I know that's not related to skill based yeah. matchmaking, but they're kind of in the same vein of like this semi competitive team based shooter. Um yeah, but like I don't know. I, I definitely kind of agree with you in the casual sense. But yeah. Sometimes it's like when we're playing with the boys, I know that they're not like super avid gamers like you and I. Like when we are queued together, yeah. it feels like the games are mat- like matched evenly. But yeah. when we play with like with your brother, for example, or even Tyler, who's uh, not with us today, but hopefully yeah. in the future, yeah. um, like they are just getting absolutely, absolutely demolished and either we have to carry them <laughs> or, or we're just also getting demolished with them because we're put into a game that's like someone is egregiously good at the game and we're just awful <laughs> yeah <laughs> which yeah, is uh, you I, know skill issue skill issue say what you will bro but yeah a little bit yeah, yeah. but a lot of it, people have funny. this sentiment too so <laughs> yes yes you're not you're not alone in that and we would be remiss to not talk about skill-based matchmaking um <laughs> it uh that's so funny okay um <laughs> yeah I was just, okay so a, a little bit in the similar similar uh, vein um okay Justin brought up to me uh, the rating system. So apparently when you go to your profile and your activity, there's a rating system. And it has like a number, I believe it's in the thousands or something. And it ranges uh, depending, I think, on your KD, if I'm not mistaken. But we have no idea what it is. So if you know what it is, let us know. But Justin, can you talk about that a little bit? How you discover that and maybe like what you... Yeah. I have an article here from Games Radar. Um, Just uh, uh, like also their questions on what this is. (laughs) <laughs> um, it's, it seems like nobody really knows. Uh, apparently you have a, uh, there's an image here. I know it's hard for you guys to see, but I'll read it out. Um, as your wins losses, uh, your kill death ratio, your score per minute, and then your average skill rating for a game that allegedly doesn't have skill based matchmaking, they have an average skill rating. And the argument is this might be for ranked is what, uh, JT over here. And I talked about the other night. Yeah. Um, which I agree with. However, this number for anybody who's really been paying attention for the last month actually is adjusted by the games that you play in casual. So like if this is a skill rating for ranked quote unquote for skill based matchmaking, why is your casual gameplay affecting this number? Nobody knows. Nobody knows why this is even like public or even what it entails. Like, is this based off wins, losses, kill death? Is it, the accumulated average of all three of these numbers like nothing's truly yeah. explained and yeah this isn't really something that's talked about like this games radar article is one of the only ones that i could find that actually is questioning what this is um they have yeah, a good my, explanation my, my, here but they don't really have a yeah. reason for why it's in the game my prediction is that it might just be it, so preseason has lasted for quite a while i believe it's been um almost a month what is it over a month um yeah one of the longer feels, ones uh, yeah, it I feels, think. yeah, it feels long. But I, uh, it could just be a placeholder or something that maybe they they weren't paying too much attention to, and maybe something that might change with season one. That's just all speculation. But I mean, like it, it just it is odd that it would change and adjust for casual play if it doesn't mean anything for casual play, since there is no skill based matchmaking. Devs have been on the record saying that that is not the case. Yes. Um. So it'll be interesting to see what they say in the future but speaking of the future um ubisoft has shared their roadmap and their plans for year one of um x defiant and um so that the was game actually itself, the video we were playing in the in the start yes is, uh yes season the one for season one yeah season one um and it's it's worth noting that the game started off with five modes but now it's six with TDM, which they added uh, in the preseason. It good started change, off with 20... good change. Yes, really good addition. They initially said they weren't going to do it, and then they did because a lot of fans were asking for for it to make it to to make it into the game. And I applaud them for for changing their mind on that. Um, they to- it totaled out to twenty four weapons, five factions, ten maps, with ten being the arena, and then four being the objectives like escort and whatnot, which are the larger maps. And a pretty robust practice range. I don't know if you've ever tried it out, but it's really it has a lot of options. It's pretty nice. It, it's much better than Call of Duty's, and Call of Duty's is like a full price game, uh, surprisingly. Um, is this the but, same practice range that they had on launch, or is it different? 
Um, are you talking about for X Defiant? Or yeah, X Defiant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, b- I believe so. But I, I honestly I went in there for five minutes and was like, "This is boring, bro." <laughs> I'm not gonna. Oh lie. really? No, dude, you should be you should be able to mess with it. Like I think there's like moving targets and and whatnot. And then it's if you compare it to like people were comparing it to Modern Warfare and Modern Warfare, you're just in a shooting range and it's like static. And then there's like only like three like you know distances that you can adjust so so here it's like a lot more it's the thing with the kill house right like it has a little kill house you like can time yourself to shoot all the targets i believe so and then i think there's like a little obstacle obstacle course thing don't quote me on that i haven't messed around with it too yeah yeah i think i i think i've messed with it i thought it was it was bland but whatever okay okay, people like it people like it it's fun it's just a little fun addition it's not like it changes the game in any meaningful no exactly but you know for a free-to-play game not too bad i would say (laughs) but the roadmap for year one includes four seasons three maps spread across each season so season one i think it'll have it might have a map on launch um if not like a couple weeks into it but by by the end of season one there'll be three new maps um, a 90 tier battle pass as with every season usually has a battle pass thankfully because i finished this battle yeah. pass so fast that was some one I thing thought... that i didn't know i didn't think we would get to but the battle yeah. pass was egregiously short and uh man yeah i finished dude, it I, in like I, two I, or three weeks and i don't even play I, this game religiously you know <laughs> yeah i haven't played in a minute so i have like 10 levels that i have to do before this new, this new season starts yeah. but um yeah so so it's worth also noting that this is 50 tiers so the next one will be more and thankfully if you have the battle pass you'll have enough currency i think to buy the next one um pre- you know thankfully um not all games do that so it's worth pointing that out <laughs> overwatch too um but yeah what a shame battle pass, I know it's really <laughs> painful, man, and I still—it's my game, man. I've Imagine so paying fun. full price for a game, losing that game. It gets force <laughs> upgraded. You lose all your skins, and you can't even buy the battle pass with the points I, that you earn every season. That's so it's, crazy, it's, dude. It's, uh-uh. a joke, but, it's a joke, but I'm a fan, and I haven't even touched the new season. But anyways, going back to X Defiant, bro. Um, you will get 12 new guns across this the first year, and 12 new operators. With this first one being from Rainbow Six Siege, Woo! Um, they did. <laughs> yes, it's pretty exciting. Um, I, I know you're more of a big Siege player. My brother used to be a Siege player, but I have played it a little bit casually, and the players look really cool. When I saw and Blitz and Jaeger in X Defiant gameplay, bro, I literally... I love playing Jaeger, bro. One of my favorite characters. So. No, Jaeger, he looked cool, and he played really fun, especially during year one. They did say that we'll add some new modes to X Defiant, but there's no date on that so far so it'll be interesting to see what they add you know if they add too many modes you know maybe it'll split the player base or i don't know how they're going to do it but it'll be um really really interesting um but justin how how what are your thoughts on the game's longevity do you think um you know are you pretty content um with the release of black ops 6 kind of coming sooner than you know it'll then it'll probably feel you know what i mean it's still we still have to i believe october or november but um what do you how do you think uh, x defiant will fare i'm pretty i'm pretty biased against call of duty so i kind of want x defiant to, to yeah. stay to stay up but yeah. i also like talking about ubisoft for a second because yeah. obviously like addressing the elephant in the room ubisoft yeah. and what a company like we were just talking crap about blizzard but ubisoft yeah. is all they also don't have the greatest track record for uh for uh being very consumer friendly their microtransactions and other games are egregious yeah. the service that they've provided to games in the past um the division being a good example like shafted uh yeah like some of the releases with far cry that they've had like i like all of those ips which is why i like x defiant um i think it's one of the best hero shooters out there right now yeah uh you know i'm i'm worried that Ubisoft is like right now they have they they are in this sweet spot of like people like this game the microtransactions aren't crazy like you were saying the battle pass is earnable for the most part yeah taking notes from hell divers there you know what I mean yeah um, yeah another thing which we'll get into in a second um the gun the emphasis on gunplay is huge like as someone who dislikes hero shooters as someone who dropped yeah. Valorant doesn't enjoy Overwatch I enjoy yeah. this game specifically because the emphasis is on the actual player input and the gunplay. Yeah. The power creep seems like it would be something that is uh, a concern for the future, but so far, like if they keep implementing abilities like this, 
that aren't super crazy can be canceled out by other operators like right now the balance is good and power creep in these games is always a huge issue it was an issue in siege it was an issue in valorant i don't know if it's much of an issue in overwatch because it's more casual but this game having a competitive mode i know that can like absolutely destroy the competitive nature of a game so yeah, uh, and I'm glad we we're talking about X Defiant together because I am a big hero shooter guy. Even though Overwatch is mostly what I play, um, I'm all about that. Even if it's like you know an arena, you know battle arena game, you know like League of Legends or Smite. Like I'm always about the team. I'm always about playing different roles, trying out new different characters. And what I really like about X Defiant is that it's it is a hero shooter, um, you know technically, but it also feels like classic COD with, you know, obviously those hero shooter elements. And I guess that's why a lot of people have grown to X Defiant because it reminds them of those classic Call of Duty days where, where there was no skill-based matching, matchmaking, and uh, whatnot. Um, but um, one of the reasons why I think it will, um, why I think it will be able to hopefully hold its own against Black Ops 6 uh, is because Black Ops 6 is going to take up a lot of storage. Um, you know, a lot of people know, a lot of Call of Duty fans know that Call of Duty is very, very known for, for, for what, being 100 gigabytes, and you have to have the ca the campaign, multiplayer, Warzone. If you, need, if you want to play all that, you got to have it all installed, and it takes up a lot of room. Um, and I think with X Defiant being free to play and not being 100 gigabytes, I think that's, that's pretty huge. I also... Um, you know, uh, Black Ops 6 also, you know, don't sleep on this reason, but, you know, it's a full price game. It's $70. I know it'll be free on Game Pass, but X Defiant is, is a really good option for people on a budget. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you, you would probably agree with those points, right? Why why it might stick, stick around, you know what I mean? When Black Ops 6 arrives? Yeah, you, you would I would say, that, right? like, in the PC world, free-to-play shooters are, like, ev are everywhere right yeah and so like yeah. this is kind of a relatively new thing for the console base and i say relatively yeah. like within the last yeah. decade but like pc gaming evolves with the free-to-play game marketplace yeah. if that makes sense like yes. me growing up that's all i did i played like all the free-to-play chinese korean shooters you could find on the internet bro i probably <laughs> got viruses from those games but you know like a little me was content and not able to just always buy the new Call of Duty. Like, I played Call of Duty growing up. I had an Xbox growing up. And it was like, when the next one came out, I'd have to wait for it to go on sale. I'd have to wait till like, Christmas or a holiday to go buy that game. Uh, uh, until I started earning my own income from my part-time jobs. But until yeah. then, it was like, I'm stuck playing games like RuneScape, you know? <laughs> yeah. Which, not yeah. a shooter, but the same vein. Free-to-play. Free-to-play stands. Reunite. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. No, you, you yeah. mentioned storage space. That is a, that is a trend that... Uh, you know, unfortunately, games are moving in that direction, and the console market hasn't seemed to catch up with it. Um, and most of that has to do with like production costs. The more the, the more storage they add to it, the more expensive they're going to get, which just means like we're bridging that gap. We're not bridging that gap. I, I guess actually, third time's the charm, right? We are bridging that gap between yeah. like, is it even worth it to be a console player when like, you know, you start end up paying for like three, four, five terabytes of storage for a console. You might as well just go the computer route, which yeah. can also have it also has controller support and all these other things. Uh, it it sucks to hear, right? Because I believe that like the console market is um, the king of the gaming market. Like it's it's hard for me as a PC player to say that, but like yeah. you look at you look at the success of Nintendo. And you look at the success of, of Sony. Uh, ugh, I can't believe I'm saying that. But, you know. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm a big PlayStation guy, so it's really, it's really, it's really funny to hear to hear you talk about that. But yeah, no, they do have their own strengths. But I, I definitely understand. But you know, storage, PC, man. You know, yes. Yeah, that's storage one of is the main issue. Weaknesses. Not an issue for us yeah. PC gamers, but like, yeah, not at all. Not at uh, all. Yeah. yeah, like that is. And if this game, which by the way, I feel like is way more popular on console. Uh, mostly because this game is is not existing on Steam. I didn't even know it was coming out until you told me about it. Yeah, and the, the reason for that is, it's it. as yeah. us on PC, like if something's not on Steam, you, people just don't know that it exists. And like, I'm being facetious with that, but like Steam is PC gaming. So if your game yeah. is not on Steam, your pretty much only avenue is word of mouth. And so like the console market for this game, also the console market. It, it, they love Call of Duty. Like every Call of Duty release, it just gets it so much support. So yeah. it's like, if we're talking about 
how Call of Duty might affect uh, X Defiant. I think it will. It will, um, yeah. It it may not be as egregious as people say, but uh, it really depends on if the story's good. I think that's a big defining factor. Uh, yeah. Talking about always online, even in single player, that's kind of nuts. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> like, what that's the heck is that? That's something that Black Ops 6 will have, which is insane. Yeah. At least with X Defiant, I don't know if it all... I mean, I'm sure it probably does require it, but but it's a live service game, and it only... No, has no, no. X, X, okay, okay. I will say, interrupting you, sorry, X Defiant is no, an online good. game. It. Yeah, it is. It yes. has to be always. It online. has to be. But so, but for a single player game, in this day and age, uh, that's that's crazy. I would I would say this day and age, I would say a, a lot of companies are starting to do this, and people hate it. I hate it. I think it's disgusting. I think if you purchase a game, as someone who is a an absolutist on like if you purchase a product, it is yours. Yeah. Games that are online only, like with a multiplayer game that's free to play, I can't really complain, right? Like I'm paying for yeah. the service of that game Correct. through like yeah. microtransactions, and that's a whole nother argument. Uh, it could be a whole podcast episode in and of itself, microtransactions yeah. and all that, like how we fund free yeah. to play games. You're selling yeah. a full priced game priced. that's going to yeah. have microtransactions <laughs> and a battle pass and skins to buy, and it's going to always be online. So whenever they decide to like shaft the service a decade from now, uh all of that investment is gone, right? Whereas, like, yeah. your old called, I could still log in right now to Steam. If my yeah. internet disconnected, I could still play Black Ops. I could still play Call of Duty World of War, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the original one from yes. the 2010s. I could still play those games. And if I have an, an, an internal server I want to run and play with friends, I can still do that, even if it's not officially supported. Uh, something that may not be possible with Black Ops 6 in the future. So that's something to, to note. Yes, definitely. Um, and sorry, uh, let me reword it. When I said in this day and age, I say that because even though it's happening a lot, um, people they get, people get backlash for it. You know what I mean? Redfall got backlash. Right. Um, but the, the, again, the backlash isn't squad. big. The backlash isn't big enough for them to stop doing it. So obviously, people are. are I mean, are still yeah, playing it, these it, games. It, yeah. It, yeah. No, it's true. It is true. But some of those games that required always online, you know. Some of them shut down the studios, or, or they 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 stopped the games, or stopped you know updating the games. But you know you could argue that that it's just a bad game. The always online part might not have been yeah. as big, but but still, I mean, you know, I'm yeah, I, I'm surprised honestly that the community. But yeah, for those uh, for those three points, um, I think X Define will be able to stick around. And going back to that year one roadmap, I think that's a good amount of content for the shooter, especially when you're gonna kind of you know put all the maps in a season but not all at once you know what i mean it's kind of like you know in tv shows where they put out all the episodes to binge in a day some people really hate that and i can see why because yeah. you know you can enjoy it piecemeal you know if you did weekly releases so here if you release a map three maps through a season i think that'll keep people coming back so i think i think x defiant does have a place for those three reasons and more dang and but, zombies um, is online too that's crazy just sh like Diverting a little bit back into the Black Ops talk. Zombies yeah. being online only? That's crazy. Like so much for it, playing custom games with your right. little brother Joey. I'm, I'm just I'm just naming a random Man, name. But what's that gonna but do to mod mean? support? Like I know modding yeah. zombies maps was like a huge thing. Yeah, no, dude, it's it's gonna be crazy. And then um yeah, I mean, you know, we're here for X Defiant, but yeah, they know they talked about like omnidirectional movement and stuff. So, so they, you know, they are obviously experimenting too. So, so if Black Ops Six isn't even that good of a game, you know, obviously X Defiant will, will will stay relevant. But I think I think Black Ops Six has a you know a pretty decent chance of you know just being eh, if, if the other cods are worth going by. You know what I mean? It's I, I, even if it is good, you know, like I said, all those three points free to play storage space yeah i i think i think it'll have time truly to i on, think but... it's dependent on the single player i think people are looking forward to the story that black ops 6 will provide being being a conflict closer to uh when we were when we were born we're we're late 90s kids so like yeah uh, the story is going to be uh talking about the gulf war uh yeah which is it's it's interesting that we're getting to this point it's like all those, all those people like in in uh, the early two thousands that were playing Call of Duty games. It's like, yeah, I still remember these stories. Like, we're getting to that point now, bro. We're boomers, boomer gamers. I know it's really <laughs> strange. And then also that this is the sixth Black Ops game, Wild. and they're touching upon 
like you know the characters from black ops one and two which we played when we were younger so mm-hmm. i just I, I find that really funny but um yeah do you okay so what um do you have any closing thoughts on um the road ahead for uh, x defiant justin um any any predictions or anything that you you know you, you remarks that you'd like to share about the game um i know season one's coming out very soon so yeah so uh season one uh coming back to the article or sorry the the roadmap season one is looking good um i love rainbow six so i'm glad that they're getting some representation i i know some people out there might be thinking just like me but why did we get siege characters like there's so many rainbow six games with awesome characters that we could have gotten like i was waiting for that bishop release you know we haven't seen bishop since vegas 2 but anyway yeah personal opinions aside no i think this is great them adding new weapons is awesome I know they made some changes to uh, um, earning rewards for your weapons. We talked about that yes yesterday, personally. Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, we can get into that when we get to your turn, if you'd like to talk about that. 90 Battle Pass tiers is awesome. More content for yeah. me to grind through is, is cool. New modes coming, ranked mode, uh, private matches, which is cool. Um, yeah. Hopefully they, they deal with anti-cheat. I haven't really run into a bunch of cheaters, but... You know, the longer a free to play game is out, that's just that just becomes worse over time. Uh, the future of the game, again, I don't think it's entirely dependent on Black Ops, but if something else comes down the line, like a, uh, you know, what do they call those diamond in the rough kind of games? They yeah. Just come out of nowhere. Hell Divers was one of those games, which I'm yeah. actually about to get into. If they can keep themselves from dipping into controversy like Hell Divers did. Their player count has plummeted, by the way. Helldivers yeah. has lost like ninety percent of their players on PC. Um, this yeah, is uh, this really is tracked sad. by uh, the the Steam the Steam DB. Only like thirty eight thousand average players on Steam. A lot of that has to do with uh, them locking players out based on region. That is still currently a thing, by the way. I know that the heat has died off of Sony for that. Which, by yeah. the way, it's a Sony thing, not really like the devs of Helldivers. Um, yeah. Uh, that whole thing has kind of died down but like they still have not uh brought back Recovered, service really. they haven't yeah. brought back service for those that have purchased the game in the the regions that where it's not allowed like you're not you're you're not signing up for playstation network but like if you don't have playstation network in your region you're still not able to play the game so if x defiant can avoid that stuff like that uh controversial political takes things like that i think is something that can affect x defiant uh, yeah, and... I think um, they're they are already doing a pretty good job of that. I would say because I you, I remember you talking about Ubisoft and their history, which is absolutely fair. This I believe this division of Ubisoft is from San Francisco, and they seem to be very receptive to things. Like yes. I see, I believe Mark Rubin is the lead dev or the you know the head you know director or whatnot of um, uh, of uh, X Defiant, and he's usually answering questions and you know, providing a lot of information in a timely manner before the game even released. And even now, I think he was the one who addressed the TDM because originally they thought, they're like, hey, we want the X Defiant to be a team-based game. Yep. And then a lot of people were like, hey, just bring Team Deathmatch because I just want to play casually with, you know, some friends. And then, you know, I, I logged in and surprisingly enough, it was on. Listening I saw to on community Twitter. feedback yeah. is huge. Yeah, and that was It is a big too. step in the right direction. So I will yeah, applaud Ubisoft yeah. for that. Yeah, no, that that's impressive, man. And and um, also going back to when you were talking about uh, hopefully future operators, dude. Um, you know, spitballing here, but I would love, I would love to see aside from um, uh, Ghost Ghost Recon and, and whatnot and 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 um, Splinter Cell. I would love to see maybe some assassins or or some some type of melee focused operators. I think that could be really cool. Like you the potential are tripping, is really bro. I don't think they'd ever do that, but maybe something Abstergo based, you know, like if they want to do something from the universe, it could be like modern Abstergo agents that could go, yeah, they yeah, could they go will, that route. No, it would be strange to just start throwing in melee weapons. I, I get that <laughs> from a balance perspective, but I just talking about how they can come up with some really creative stuff. Cause you've got IPs like, uh, freaking, um, Assassin's Creed and, and, and whatnot. I mean, It'd be really cool to see some type of melee weapon. You know, it doesn't have to be like the main thing, or you know, they don't have to be solely. Or maybe their ability is melee focused. I don't know. I'm just spitballing, but yeah. there's a lot of potential for this game, and I really do hope it sees. Uh, you know. You know, there's not a lot of characters movie. that use smokes or like concealment for their team. So, 
I'm kind yeah. of I'm predicting that we'll get an agent that is is related to like throwing down like a smoke bomb or something. I think that'd be cool. That would be really awesome. But um, yeah, I think I think this might be a good place to to conclude the podcast. But we appreciate you guys bearing with us. This is our first episode. Um, I've never done a podcast before. Justin's a big editing guru. Uh, seemingly, he's been you know he kind of work to put all the template that you see and all the articles and the videos together. So I really appreciate you, Justin. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, do you have anything else to say before maybe we sign sign off? Yeah. Um, I just appreciate everyone being here. Um, make sure to keep up to date with uh, things on JT Reviews Plus for more things gaming content related, film related, and uh, of course, looking forward to new episodes of the podcast in the future hopefully we'll get tyler in on those i know he wasn't here with us but uh he's a he's a close friend of ours also really interested in this topic so yeah that's yeah, all i really I am... have to say thanks for ever, everyone who tuned in and uh appreciate you being here for our first ever podcast this is new to me too i used to live stream a little bit in high school just like amateur level stuff so this is like my first i guess like official production working with somebody else so yeah, i'm looking forward to it yeah, all things considered, um, I think we, you know, do all right. Um, yeah, expect us, um, expect the uploads to be on YouTube. Um, I will hopefully try to cut down some shorts to post, um, you know, and hopefully for maybe Justin to post as well. We definitely want to get Tyler up in here. Um, he is actually, you know, he has, um, he is engaged, and so he'll be getting married shortly, and, you know, hopefully yeah, after that, maybe go. we can... Yeah, hopefully uh, we're excited to celebrate him and um, his fiance. So, um, you know, once once you know he takes care of everything he needs to take care of. <laughs> yeah, once he takes care of everything he needs to take care of, then hopefully he'll start joining us here on the podcast. And you know, once we get better, we get once we get more experience, um, we'll hopefully expand to talk about other things um, such as movies and um, you know culture stuff. So. Uh, be on the lookout for that. But um, thank you guys for listening and hope to see you on the next one. Peace.